Hey guys, Ashley D. Will here, and today I'm going over the triumphal procession that uh, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14, talks about. Okay, so I want to read it to you first in the Amplified, and then we'll do the other, the other one. Um, in the Amplified it says, But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumph as trophies of Christ's victory and through us spreads and makes evidence the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. Okay, so that is the Amplified. And so I want to look at this in the other trend. This is probably NIV or something more simple. So 2 Corinthians 2.14 but thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. So we're talking about triumphal procession. This is actually happening right now as we speak. And it's been going on our whole lives and we didn't even know it. So this triumphal procession is an ongoing thing. And this is what verse 14 is talking about. And it goes more into it uh, in verse 15. And you can read more there. But I wanted to kind of focus in this triumphal procession on this. Kind of hone in on this part. Okay. Christ always leads us in triumphal procession. That's the, the part I want to hone in on in this video. So, what does this mean, leading us in triumphal procession? What is he talking about? Well, let's go into that a little bit deeper than just the surface, which I love to do. Okay, so we have this part here that talks about leading us in triumph, right? Leading us in triumph. Can you see that? Um, leading us in triumph. Okay. What does this mean? I'm going to go over, just read all the different um, variations of the definition, and then we're going to talk about them, each one. Okay. Okay. So, leads us in triumph means I lead one as my prisoner in a triumphal procession. I lead around. I make a show, a spectacle of. I cause to triumph, to display triumph openly, publicly exalting the victor who leads a victory procession and putting the conquered on display as an exhibition that is totally defeated. Okay, so let's go over. Um, some of these uh, meanings, okay? So the first one we have here is um, I lead one as my prisoner in a triumphal procession. What does that mean? What is he talking about? Well, what he's talking about is leads us in triumph means Christ leads one at a time, his saints, the those who've been raised from the dead in Jesus Christ, as my prisoner. Were you a prisoner? I was a prisoner. I was on death row. And you were on death row. We were prisoners. And in Isaiah uh, 51, 61, in different places in Isaiah, it talks about the prisoners being set free, the captives being released. That's us, guys. That's us. We were prisoners. And then now in the New Testament, Paul talks about himself being a slave and a bondservant to Christ. If Remember back in the slave days, if a wealthy gentleman came and purchased some slaves and they belonged to him at that point, and then he said, you are free to go, a lot of times when that would happen, the slaves were so overwhelmed with gratitude that they were indebted to this man forever. They wouldn't leave him. 
They just wanted to serve him the rest of their lives. Some of them would leave, but some couldn't. And that's kind of the type of prisoner you're talking about, prisoner of love. <laughs> okay, so I lead one as my prisoner in a triumphal procession. This is a triumphal procession. Triumphal means victorious. That means there is absolute victory. And a procession is like a, you know, the king is coming into town. Or when the queen makes her appearances in England, everybody comes in the horse and carriage and it's just a big deal. And they have the red carpet and everybody's ooh and ooh and on, right? Well, that's what a procession is. It's a big deal. Okay. I lead around. The Lord Jesus Christ, through his Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of Jesus, is leading us in everything that we do. He's leading us around by His Spirit. That's how we operate. We live and move and have our being in Him. And so He is doing this uh, leading in this triumphal procession all the time, and we don't even know it. Now, it says to make a show or a spectacle of. When you make a show of or a spectacle of, you are kind of making fun of somebody. You're making a show or a spectacle out of someone, and it's not quite mocking, but it's almost a mocking. And this hints towards uh, Colossians 2.15. Remember at the cross? And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. So making a public spectacle of someone is basically making a fool out of them. And so in this triumphal procession, the Lord is making a show and a spectacle of the powers of darkness. Okay, he is making a spectacle of them just as he did on the cross, he is continuing that in our lives as we live our daily lives. He's making a spectacle of the powers of darkness, just like just as he did at the cross. Okay, what's next? To cause to triumph in this victorious and triumphal procession, the Lord is causing us to triumph. We already have our complete victory in Jesus Christ the moment we're saved because our spirits are perfected at that moment, but our souls are being conformed to the image of Christ in the process of sanctification. And as we overcome through his spirit, right, each obstacle, he is causing that triumph to happen and he is putting it on display for the, all the spirit world to see and all the regular world to see as well. Okay, so what's next? Um, to display triumph openly. He is displaying his triumph openly to all the spirit world and to all the uh, visible world. And his triumph is that he has won his trophies. We are the trophies that he has won. We are the saints. We are his treasure, the saints of the living God the army of God, each individual soldier, those are treasures of the Lord. They are his trophies. We are his trophies, the saints. So he's doing this openly. Next, publicly exalting the victor who leads a victory procession. This is Christ again, publicly, openly exalting himself, who is the victor. He's the victor. He caused the victory, right? That means he's the victor. So, and we are following in the train of the road behind him. In his wake, we are following along. Okay? So, he's leading a victory procession. And as we follow him in this procession, we have victory because we are in Christ. Okay? Lastly, we have putting the conquered on display as an exhibition that is totally defeated. What comes to mind here as you see the word conquered? Does it remind you of 1 Corinthians 15, 55 to 57? Oh, death, 
Where is your victory? Where is it? Let me see it. Where is it? Oh, death, where is your sting? He is, this is, these are mocking words. Okay, this is someone who has defeated an enemy and he's saying, where's your weapon? You don't have it anymore, right? Because I've taken it from you. Okay, this is really intense, you guys. And 56, for the sin, for sin is the sting that results in death. So anyone who has been stung by sin on this earth, that basically means anyone who's been conceived on this earth um, has been stung by sin, and that results in death, right? Because the wages of sin is death. Um, the um, soul that sins, it must die, right? And so the law gives sin its power, and Christ has fulfilled the law for us as we are in him. So we don't have to strive to fulfill the law because he's done that for us. And in that, sin has lost its power over us because we are not under the law anymore. Christ has redeemed us from the law and put us in himself. Okay? So that's that's what that means. The um, sin is the sting that results in death and the law gives sin its power. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So this victory, this conquering, is the conquering of sin and death and the grave. See, that's why he's mocking death, saying, where is your sting? Where You have nothing now because I've taken everything from you. You are a loser. That's what he's saying. This is serious, guys. This, this is so serious. Okay, and then um, Ephesians 3.10, that, uh, let me read that. His intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realm. This goes with the public spectacle in a sense because in this triumphal procession, Christ is making known in their faces to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms the wisdom manifold wisdom of God in revealed in us his saints in us his treasure in us his trophies he's making this known see <laughs> this is awesome and so um, and, and what he's making known is that they are totally defeated there's not one area where they have victory over the saints. They are totally defeated because they do not have the victory over sin, death, and the grave anymore for those who believe. So that is a huge, huge uh, defeat. And it, it angers them and it frustrates them. And then um, lastly, of course, we think about when Christ is in this triumphal um, procession and this victory march with the saints of the living God, the army of God following behind him, what else is kind of going on in there between him and, and these powers of darkness? Uh, 1 John 5, 18 says, We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning. And in other videos, I've talked about how practicing sin is different than struggling with sin. Okay, struggling with sin is what saints normally do. Um, and there's no condemnation in that. But practicing sin is serious, and uh, you got to deal with that. Um, it usually means you need to get saved, but sometimes there are differentiations there. But anyway, the point is that practicing sin and um, struggling with sin are different. But then it goes on and says, For God's Son holds them, God's children, securely, and the evil one cannot touch them. So in this victory march this this um triumphal procession he is he is it is known that they the powers of darkness the rulers and the authorities in the high places cannot touch these trophies that christ is displaying to the spirit world day and night they cannot touch us and if they pass through christ's fingers then that is an appointed divine sanctification uh, situation Okay, isn't that awesome? Okay, last thing I want to do is 
talk about always. Now, I know we see always in the scriptures sometimes, but we don't really get it. We don't apply it to the verse in reality. We just think, oh yeah, that's a little spiritual thing. We don't understand that it's really always. So what does always mean? Always means at all times. So what does at all times mean? It means at all times. That means there's never a time when it doesn't apply. So think about that. Imagine, and the, the, well, basically what, what that's saying is that regardless of your circumstances, it's always happening. This is always happening regardless of circumstances. So you're divorcing your spouse, your house has burned down, your children have been killed, uh, a nuclear bomb has come on your, your country, or et cetera, et cetera. Is this still going on? Yes, it's still going on. No circumstance can cause this to stop because the scripture says it's all, he's always leading us in triumph, always. So this is what is going on behind the curtain of this freak show time dimension that we're in. This is what's really going on behind the scenes. This triumphal procession of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, is leading his saints. He's leading his army. He's leading his trophies in this victory march. And it is a beautiful thing. And he's making a public spectacle of the authorities and the rulers in high places, the rulers of darkness. He's making known the manifold wisdom of God. He is mocking them that death is defeated and they have no case anymore. And he, it is a known um, understated thing that they cannot touch us without, of course, his permission and his, his bidding. Okay? So that's just a little insight and a little bit looking beneath the surface of this verse, 2 Corinthians 2.14. It's one of my favorite verses. And um, let, let's also note here that Christ, it says Christ always leads. So do you see that? Christ leads. When you see Christ leads, are you thinking about Psalm 23, the shepherd and the sheep? Christ always leads. Okay, that needs to register in your brain. He's the shepherd. I'm not. He leads, I don't. He's leading, that means I'm a sheep. I follow, and I can't lead because I don't know where to go. I follow. Okay, that's what I want you to get out of that. But Christ always leads us in triumphal procession. This just needs to hammer in your brain that he leads you, and you follow. You don't ever lead the Lord. Because you're not the Lord. And I don't ever lead the Lord because I'm not the Lord. We all know that. So, he's leading in this. Always. He's leading this triumphal procession. And I want it to nail down into you a little bit deeper the fact that you are following. You're following him. You're not independent. You're dependent. You're not leading, you're following. You're not the vine, you are a branch, okay? Just a little review of some other things we've talked about before, but this is just a little insight into 2 Corinthians 2.14, and I hope that you will think about this, because this is going on all the time. And no matter what's going on in your life, this triumphal procession is taking place in the spirit realm. And you can rejoice in this regardless of your circumstances. Circumstances, a lot of times, really don't matter. It's what's going on behind the scenes that's really important. Okay? So you can take comfort in this. You can take strength in this. You can take joy from this, knowing that this is going on and you're a part of it and Christ is doing it. Okay? So I hope y'all have gotten something out of this, and I hope that you have a great day, and I'll see you soon.